Hey guys, Godric Gray here with another video for you today. So this one's gonna be much more. Di Come on, lay down. Hey guys, Godric Gray here today with a video for you that's gonna be a little bit different than anything else that I've done so far. Uh, so all of the other video tutorials that I have for belts are individual parts of the belt, uh, and I realize I've never done just a start to finish video. Uh, for my belts. So that's what this is going to be today. It's going to be a little bit longer than normal. Uh, but where I am filming at my house, uh, sitting on the couch, going to be watching Netflix, uh, which is how I make all my belts anyway. Uh, so just a disclaimer here, my dogs will probably be coming in and out. You'll probably hear them. Uh, so it's not going to be as uh, quite as clean <laughs> as some of my other videos are, but I think it will be worth it uh, to be able to do a start to finish video. Uh, but before we jump in here, if you like this content and would like to see more of it, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button below. That really helps out the channel. In this video today, we're going to be talking about how I do a belt from start to finish, starting with concept all the way down to the very last uh, minute details on how we finish the belt. Let's jump on in. So this is what I'm having to deal with when I say my dogs are going to be here trying to work on stuff and all three of them want to be right in my lap so if you hear them if you hear the snorting it's probably this one the other two will probably be pretty quiet but you might see this one more than you hear that one we'll see how this goes though all right so the belt for today is going to be a four colored belt being made for a good friend of mine named amber uh, she sent me a concept and said that she wanted to have her three company colors plus a lot of purple which is not a company color uh, so Generally, four-colored belts are pretty difficult. Um, they're hard to get balanced. They're, they're not the easiest thing to do. Uh, so generally what I do for concepts is I send a couple of pictures of stuff that I've already made, or I ask them to go to my Facebook page and look around at what I've already done, and maybe there might be something that they like there. Um, so I sent her this, and then what I do next is I go into, I have a drawing app on my phone and I just sketch out what it would look like if they, uh, it, what it could possibly look like depending on the picture up above. Uh, so this one here you can see the main color is purple with the blue and green and silver which are the company colors in the middle very similar to the picture up here above. Um, she said she really liked that one but I sent her another picture just to be sure I always like to give a couple of different options. Could do something like this with the same colors as well. This is a different weave um, different color pattern, but she ended up liking the first one, um, so that's what we went with. Uh, so what I do mainly for my concept is I look at pictures, I have the customers look at pictures of what I've done in the past, and then I go in and I just have a free sketch pad thing on my app on my phone, and I go in and I just very um, crudely draw what I'm thinking about, send it to them and kind of let them pick what they like the most. So that is uh, the concept for this belt. Let's move on to the materials that we'll be using today. All right, so here are the materials that we're gonna be using today. Uh, all of this is 550 paracord. You can see we have the green, the blue, the purple, and the silver, as well as our two and a half inch nickel plated steel ring up there on the top. I've also got my screwdriver and my scissors, and I have a lap desk over here, which you'll see in a little bit. Uh, towards the end, we also need uh, we also will need a lighter. Uh, what do you use as uh, your material for this? I made a video specifically on paracord versus macrame. Uh, the customer specifically asked for paracord in this one, which is why we're using paracord. Uh, but even if they didn't, that's the one I prefer. It doesn't hurt my fingers as much to make it, and I also think that the colors look a little better when you put it all together. So that's the materials that we're gonna be using today. Uh, let's jump on into measuring out our cord. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start. Um, I'm gonna take my ring here and I'm gonna start measuring out the cord uh, to be able to put it onto the ring. Uh, I am gonna measure out eight yards per strand here uh, to be able to put it onto the ring. We're gonna use 12 uh, strands for this plus one extra that we'll be weaving back and forth. You're gonna see that as we go. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and lay the pattern out, hook it up to the ring. I'm using, uh, I'm pretty sure they're called clove hitches or half clove hitches to be able to hook these onto here. I'll show you how I do that here in a minute. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started.
And then when I cut these, uh, I go through and I make sure that I knot them at the end so that way they just don't fray. Um, do that with all of them. So then what you do is you go to, you take your two ends that you have. Here it is. And then you just draw it out and find the very center point of that. So each one of those strands are about four yards long eight yards long but when you fold them over it's at four so i'm going to take it and then i'm going to loop it over pull it through and then tighten it up so again i have the this is the middle point of my eight yard strand i'm going to take my ring here i'm going to make put the loop over the top of the ring bring it down a little bit so it has a giant loop there. And you're gonna take your two strands and just put them right in the middle. And pull all the extras through. If it gets bunched up like that, don't worry about it. It's not too big of a deal right now. So then you have that right there. And then you're just going to pull it real tight and cinch it up just like that. I can just kind of show you. I have the ends here. I always knot them um, just so when I'm working with all of this they don't fray. You can kind of already see how the innards of the paracord is already coming out. Um, if you don't do the little knots here that will continue to just fray all the way down. Um, and some of these belts can take a long time so I just knot them right there and it ends the fraying and then when we get to the end we'll just snip these and burn these and um, it doesn't matter as much, but that's just a little tip that I do as I go through and work with these. So I've got three of them on there. This is our silver. We're going to put a blue one here, a green one here, and then purple on both sides. There, you can see that we have the silver, the green, and the blue company colors. So now we're just going to put purple all the way on the outside here. So what I'm doing after I put each of these on, I'm going through and just tightening it as much as I can. I'll go through at the very end. You can see, maybe you can see how this one here is pretty loose compared to the other ones. You want these to all be as tight as you can. Um, so I'm going through and just doing that a little bit now as we go through, but towards the end, I'll go through one last time and make sure they're all super tight before we begin. So we have nine, so we're gonna do two more on each side. That gives us a total of 11. Um, I would rather have 12, but because we have an odd number here, it's all right. Um, I guess I can show you. So I've got two purple on each side here, um, plus the company colors in the middle, but because there's an odd amount here um, because of the silver, we're only gonna have 11 on this instead of the 12 that I had originally intended. So now what I'm doing here is I'm going back through and I'm tightening all of these to make sure that they are as tight and as smooth as we can get them before we start weaving.
And I'm doing this just by pulling each strand um, individually. So I'm just grabbing one cord, pulling it until it won't move anymore, and then just moving on and doing that with all of them. And then now I'm just going to push all of these together. All right. So there is the main section of our belt. We have 11 strands on here. Um, the weave we're going to be doing today is called the single strand serpent weave. I have a couple of videos up on that. Um, but just a quick premise, these, all of these are going to stay completely straight. We're going to put one super long one over here and that particular one is just going to weave back and forth. Um, so each of these that I have are eight yards long, uh, where the one I'm about to cut out will be 11 yards long. And that one needs to be longer because it's going to be weaving back and forth. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going now. All right, and this one's a little different than all the other ones. All the other ones, you found the middle point and then put the middle point here. Um, with this one, it's different. You just take one of the ends here and you're gonna make your hitch knot just with the one end. So you're gonna have this little stubby end right here. And then you're just gonna pull both of them through and then pull all of this excess through. And then you just pull that tight, but you can see some of these came loose again, right? So I'm just going to go through, tighten these back up. So again, this one over here is 11 yards long. This is the one you're going to be weaving back and forth. All the other ones here are eight yards long and those are going to stay put. So once we begin here, this is what it looks like once you get all of your cord on your ring right before you start weaving. Now the hardest part, what to find to watch on Netflix. I think I'm feeling some Anthony Bourdain today. All right, so to start, um, I am going to put the ring on my toe. Um, after a few weaves, we'll be able to transfer it over to the lap desk, which is how we'll do the majority of this. Um, but for the very first couple, it doesn't really work on my lap desk, so I put it on my toe. I'm going to be taking this end one here and weaving it back and forth. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on exactly how I do this. I have other videos on that. Um, I'll just briefly explain it. So essentially, you're going to take this guy and you're going to weave it under one, over the other, under, over, under, over, all the way throughout the entire part. And then once you get to the end, you're going to pull it all through. Which, again, this is the 11 yard cord, so it's gonna take a little bit. You're gonna pull it tight. And then you're going to go under and wrap it around the last cord here, and then just continue on going back the other direction. Uh, again, I have other videos on this. I'll link them below. If you need a better explanation on just this part, um, go watch that video, pause this one, go watch that, and then come back to this one uh, for the rest of the video. All right, so then what I did here is I just took my, my extra and I'm pulling this as tight as I can. I'm gonna take my screwdriver here Again, this is in the other video that shows more in detail on why we do this. Push it all the way up to get rid of all the slack. 
pull it tight, pull it tight, start on the next row. All right, so now I have transferred this over to my lap desk. Um, pretty much the only reason I use the lap desk is for this clip up here. Um, if you don't have a lap desk with this clip, you can get one of those big binder clips, like the big black ones, hook it up here. Um, I've seen some people do this off of door frames. I've seen some people take this end and just like put it into a dresser drawer and use that as, essentially you just need something to keep tension on this. So as you try to make your belt, it will stay the same tension all the way throughout. All right, so I went in, um, oh, let's let this focus. I went in off camera and I swapped out the blue here. Um, I had a darker blue in there and I didn't think it looked very good. So I sent a couple of pictures to the customer. Uh, they agreed with me, so I swapped it out and went to this lighter blue. Um, so just a little bit of a difference there than what we had originally. But now we're gonna jump back in. Um, I unwove it and then put this in and then just wove a few more here. I do that quite a bit actually. You'd be surprised how often I'll get five or six inches into a belt and then not re like it or realize that the colors don't look good or maybe that I think something else could do better so then I unweave it. Um, that doesn't take too long so don't be afraid to do that if there's something that you don't like. Um, it's better to undo it here at this point than when you've got three or four feet done in it because then after that it's you can't really. I mean it's, it's a waste of time to do that. So. Um, other than that, we're just going to jump on in, and now I'm going to weave for, no, oh, probably two hours. So we'll, uh, I'll catch you in a little bit. Update on the dog situation. I am about half an hour into weaving right now. Got 18 inches maybe. Let me and see where we're at so far. Looking pretty good. Weaves pretty consistent so far. I'm definitely glad I did the lighter blue instead of the darker blue. I think that looks so much better. Um, but I'm gonna prop this back up on the stand and keep going. All right, so after an hour of weaving, we are probably a third, probably over between a third and a halfway finished with the weave part. 
So give me an update and I'm gonna keep on going. All right, so I just finished up with the weaving. I'm um, right at about two and a half hours, between two and a half and three hours. Um, so the gener in general, I make my belt six feet uh, to seven feet, depending. This one I want to be towards the seven foot one. So this belt is currently woven at right under six feet. Generally I have about six inches of an end knot and then an additional six inches of the little dangly parts. Um, which adds a foot. So this belt is at a, right at six foot. It's like five ten right now, which is fine. I, you can if you want to be be ultra specific on this stuff. I'm not. I don't really measure it out too terribly much. I just ballpark it. Um, but so I'm done weaving. Now I'm going to cap this uh, to keep it all in place. This is going to be done with a Solomon bar. Uh, the reason you do this is if you don't cap this, if you go right into your end knot, um, your weave will get loose over time and will start to uh, slide down the rest of the, the end knot and such. And so you have to do this part. Um, if you don't, your belts will not last as long in my experience. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my weaving one that uh, I've been going back and forth with and kind of just flop it over here. I guess I'm going to go underneath it this time but it'll be just underneath. I'm gonna take my far right strand, my far left strand, and make, oftentimes this is called a cobra knot. Um, it's got a few different names for it. Solomon bar is generally what I call it. Um, you can find all sorts of, of videos on that, but essentially I'm taking this left one over here, laying it on top and making a four. I'm gonna take the far right one, lay it over that one, bring it underneath and through the loop and just tighten that up. So if you've done anything with like paracord bracelets or anything like that, this is the, the Cobra knot, the um, Solomon bar is the most basic um, knot that you'll do. All the bracelets are made out of these, right? So there's one, I'm gonna do probably three of these and then I'll go back in and straighten all of these little cords out here. So there's two. And there's three. So what I'm gonna do now is, if I don't know if you can see it or not, these are, don't look very good. They're all, they're not very straight. Um, so I always just go back through. I take my weaving end, which went underneath if you remember. Um, let's see if I can get it pull it out a little bit um, we'll get to that in a second here there it is all right so I just kind of leave that out for a moment and then I go through here and I just pull on each of these strands and tighten them up um, keeping your the end down here getting all of your cords to be straight um, is one of the signs of someone who knows what they're doing uh, a lot of people, when they make these belts, they just kind of leave it and you get all these different little bumps and it just doesn't look very good. Um, getting someone who spends the, just the, really the two minutes um, is all it really takes here to go through and straighten those out, show someone who knows what they're doing. Um, all right, so I went through and now all of those are pretty straight, but what you gotta do is flip it over and make sure that these are all straight as well. Um, a lot of times they're not. This one actually turned out pretty good. I'm gonna just give them a little bit more here just to make sure. All right, so now I'm back to my front side. What I'm gonna do now, this is the weaving end. I'm gonna pull it out. 
And now I'm just gonna tighten this as much as I can, which brings all of the weave together. And then I'm just gonna come back through here again, straighten all these up, make sure that they lay flat. Then I'm gonna come in and grab that weaving strand one and pull it all the way through and tighten it up. So now that is a cap right there on the end of my belt. Um, this will keep it from sliding down in the future. So now I'm gonna grab a drink real quick and I'll be back to finish the end knot in just a moment. All right, so now we're getting to um, probably my favorite part of making belts, which is the end knot here. So um, the customer generally will have an idea of what they want. Um, this customer said I can do what I want with the end knot, which is my favorite. Um, so I'm gonna do uh, an end knot that I don't think I've done a video on. It is my favorite knot, it's the triple helix knot. Now I have a video on the double helix knot this is, almost a sen this is almost the same thing, it's just adding in an additional one here. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is these two purple ones from our cap. We're just gonna kind of fold back in here into the middle. And we're gonna pull out two silvers. We're gonna pull out two blues. And we're gonna pull out two greens. And what we're going to do, we're going to have one of each color on either side. Then we're going to try and tuck all of the other ones as tightly as we can and keep it nice and clean. Now, I did purple here for the cap. I'm going to do purple at the bottom cap as well. Um, you can kind of do different things here uh, depending on your color scheme. I knew I wanted to use these three colors. Um, for the end knot, so that's why I did the purple here, um, but you can do different color designs there if you want to But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna organize these. I want silver in the middle um, Because I think that would that's what will look best. So I'm gonna do oh, Hold on Come here French Bulldog So I'm gonna do blue first and then my silver and then my green. So the important part when you do these knots is you make sure that you do them in order. The blue ones are always gonna go over, the, the silver and the green are always going to go under. That will make more sense here in a minute, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So my blue, let's see, let's do this. Yeah, that, that's what I want, okay. So I'm gonna take my blues, they're going over the other two, and essentially I'm gonna do half of a Solomon bar where I'm gonna take this, this, I'm gonna make it as a four. My right one is gonna go over. My left one is gonna go over that end of the four, underneath it all, and through the loop. And then I'm gonna pull it tight, okay? Now, essentially that's all we're gonna be doing for this, um, but we're just gonna do that a whole lot. And you gotta make sure that you're doing it on the right side every time, um, or the left, either one. Just pick one side and then always stay there, right? So my right one went over. So my next color is going to be silver. So it goes underneath the blue. And we're gonna do the same thing. Make the four, send the other side through, pull it tight. And then I go back in and pull tight the one that I just did before it. All right, so now it is green's turn. So green's gonna go underneath it all, make the four, pull it under, tighten then tighten the one above it, probably the one above that, right? So it will start to look better the more you go down. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take all of these and try and push it up towards the top to keep it as tight as I can. All right, so now that is one full rotation of the end knot. So we're gonna start with blue. Blue goes over the other two. I'm gonna make the four. Go underneath, bring it through, tighten, 
and then tighten the previous one and the one before that. Alright, so blue's done. Now we're gonna go silver, which goes under the blue one. Make it four. Bring it through. Tighten it. Tighten it. Tighten it. Green is gonna go under silver. Make the four. You get the point now. Alright, so I think that's about how long I want it to be. Um, you can go and make these longer if you want. Some people will do like a foot or two foot of these. I normally just go for about six inches. Um, so that's the, the end of my triple helix knot. Probably my favorite knot. Alright, so now what we're going to do, this part can be a little tricky. We're going to take all of... Can you see that on the screen? Yeah. So we're going to take all of these cords that we were just working with and we're going to bring them down to the edge. And then we're going to pull out two purple ones and we're going to do the same thing like what we did up above with our cap up here, uh, pretty much for the same reasons. If you don't cap it, it your end knot will slide and it won't work very well. Um, so pretty much for the same reasons here, we're gonna do the same thing, probably gonna do four of them and see how it looks. Um, but what you gotta do with these, if after we make the cap, we have to pull through our working ends or it doesn't look very good. I'll show you here in a second. Let me just, let me just go ahead and do it. Um, so I'm doing a full Solomon bar. I'll do three of them and then adjust and then probably do one or two more just to be be safe. All right, so if you look at it right now, let me see if I can show you that. So all of these guys up here are not very loose and it look, or they are very loose and it looks really bad. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is go through and pull all of those ends that we were working on. I'm gonna tighten them up and bring them as close to this end knot as I can, uh, this little cap, and then push the cap up as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. And then I'm going to just grab a hold of these down here and push up. So there we have a cap at the top and at the bottom. Again, this keeps your whole belt together. If you don't do this process, your weave will slide down um, and it just won't look good in the long run. I'm gonna do just a couple of more down here. Four, four to six of these at the end. I think four looks good right here. So then what I'm gonna do, get rid of this. All right. So those two purple ends that I was just working with, I'm gonna separate them off to the side. I'm gonna take all of my other ends here and I'm going to split them in half. So I'm just gonna guess to start with, well, it's roughly half and count them out. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two working ends from that Solomon bar. I'm going to put a knot 
underneath the end knot here. Um, this will, again, keep everything from sliding and keep it in place. Um, then the only really real upkeep you have to do on this belt is every now and then come back in and tighten this knot. Um, because this little knot right here, right? So that guy is keeping this in place, which is keeping your weave in place, which is what you want. So for your weave now to become loose, um, it has to come loose on its own, then go through the end knot, then go through your cap, and then go through your little knot here. Um, so generally, uh, this is just a, like a basic, I don't know, this is basic knot is over under twice. Um, if you really want to, you can come in and melt that knot, and I don't have to worry about what I, any, about this anymore. Um, I generally don't do that because people then complain sometimes of why did you burn my belt? You know, so on all of my personal ones, I just melt that knot so I don't have to worry about it. Um, but a lot of people don't like that, so you just tell them that this knot here, they just have to every now and then that knot will come undone. Uh, just come in and tighten it back up. So let me go get my lighter and some other tools and we will move on to the uh, my most hated part of making belts, which is finishing up the ends. Uh, like I said, the end knot here is my favorite part. I think that just looks beautiful. Um, my favorite part is making that. This last little probably 10 minutes of cleaning up the ends is by far my least favorite part. So I'm gonna go get my lighter and I'll be right back. All right, so now for my least favorite part, uh, cleaning up the ends here. So what you need for this, uh, a lighter, scissors, and ideally uh, needle nose pliers. I can't find mine right now, so I got a hammer. Um, I'll show you what, what that is here for in a moment. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in and we're gonna clip this, and then what we have to do on each strand, we go in and take the innards and cut it about an inch back, we then heat it, and then we then push it all together and, and push it into a seal. Um, a lot of mistake, or a mistake that I see a lot of people do is they will cut it and they will melt it, but they don't cut out the innards or they don't um, push it all together. And if you don't cut out the inner part of it, the, they will come through. Even if you melt them over time, it will just look awful. Um, so just trust me on this. This is what I do. This is what works best in my experience. Um, generally on these little ones, I come down eight inches or so and cut. Um, if you go shorter than that, like if you go like four inches, they like tend to fan out and I don't like that look. Um, so eight inches normally. Some people like them. I'm one on my belt. I go like way down here just cause I think that looks cool. Um, but unless the customer tells me otherwise, I generally go between six and eight inches. I just eyeball it. Um, and then I cut all of these at the same length. So I'm just gonna go eight inches or so and cut. And then all of this extra here, I just have a bag right here. And just throw it in. Makes cleanup a little bit easier. So now we'll go back to this guy here all right so get my bag what you're gonna do you're gonna take one of these ends you're going to reveal the innards Let's see if you can see this here all right so you're gonna reveal about an inch come on focus here camera So we're going to uh, just cut the innards about an inch out. We're then going to melt this and then use the hammer on the lap desk or another hard surface to uh, melt the end. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you what that looks like. So essentially now that I cut the innards out, there's an inch here of paracord without the innards, which is what you want. Wow, stop dogs. Then I'm going to take my lighter, I'm gonna hold it for 
four or five seconds. Uh, then I'm gonna take my hammer and I'm gonna push it down so that it completely fuses this into a, a good end here. This now will never come undone. Uh, this will not fray. The innards won't ever poke through and you should not ever have to touch it ever again. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the rest of these. Right. So, if our camera will focus here, you can see the ends there. You have them all melted. They're all roughly the same length. You should never have to worry about those ends at all. Now we need to flip it around to the other end of the belt, because if you remember, we had one loose end up here. Essentially, I'm just going to cut this guy right at the knot here, and then melt it as well. Now with this one, um, you gotta be kinda careful because you don't wanna burn the other paracord. So I keep the flame on it for just a second, and I pull it away, and put it on just a little bit more, pull it away. Because you don't wanna burn all the other paracord around it but you have to burn it this a little bit or it will come undone and fray. And I just kind of smooth that out. And then, the, let me see if we can get camera here to focus for us. The uh, end result, maybe, there we go, is just a nice neat little knot up there in the end. So now, I am going to take you into the other room where my mannequin is, and I'll show you how I take pictures and market this, and we'll go over some price stuff, and then we're pretty much done. All right, so we are now in my office, and I have my uh, mannequin set up here with the belt on it. Um, so just a couple of tips here, if you do decide to get a mannequin, um, I highly suggest it. Uh, get good garb. This is linen. Um, don't throw cheap stuff on there. Uh, when you take photos of it, like my knot that was on the ring here is underneath. You can't see it in the photos. Um, but definitely I would recommend if you're going to try and sell these, get a mannequin. Um, it helps sales quite a bit in my that I've been able to tell in my experience. Um, I try generally to take a photo uh, from the front and the sides and then also the end knot. Um, I will show you guys some photos here that I took from this that I have put on my uh, social media pages. Generally, I just take them into Photoshop or Lightroom and I have a couple of filters that I can put them in. Um, but putting them on a mannequin, I think, is incredibly helpful uh, if you're going to try and sell these in the future. All right, so that pretty much wraps up the belt. Um, only last thing to do really is cover cost. Uh, what would I charge for something like this? Uh, so generally, I charge materials plus $15 an hour. Uh, we were at right around three hours uh, for this whole belt, so we're at 45 bucks there roughly $15 in material cost. So right at about 60 bucks is what I would put this at. Uh, if it takes me a little longer, it might be a little more than that. Uh, if I use different materials, like a nicer ring, it might bump up from there. Uh, but this belt here, I would sell for about 60 bucks uh, if I were going to list it or try and sell it. Um, so other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I know this video is kind of probably choppy and uh, a little different than what I normally do, but I wanted to show you guys from the very beginning to the very end what my process looks like. Whole thing took me about three hours, maybe a little bit more. 
uh, but not too bad. Thank you so much for watching this. If you want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe as well. Leave a couple of comments down below too. If anything was unclear, I'd love to make another video and try and help you guys out with this. Thanks for watching. Tune in next time.